Hi, welcome back. Today uh, I've got something interesting for you. Uh, one is to look at what we were looking at last time, what Kripal was saying, that uh, science, physical science, is not the only way of looking at the world. And I also did an experiment with uh, a man called Jacobo Grinberg, who demonstrated that there was a field, a conscious field, between people. Uh, unfortunately, Jacobo Grinberg, uh, soon after I met him, which was in about the year 2000, disappeared. And a lot of his experiments, uh, he, which he'd written up, and his was called the Syntergic Theory, but we'll go into that, was in fact classified initially by the CIA. Now we can remember that because uh, there was a lot of work done with telepathy and remote viewing which the CIA were interested in. So Jacobo Grinberg's work was just another one of this. So let's start then with one of the most compelling pieces of evidence, I think, or certainly the way of formulating the outside world to show that it's not just bits of brain function. It is in fact embedded, we are embedded in a field of consciousness. So let us look then at the, the justification for giving up reductionism as the only science. There are many reasons, uh, but this one I think is a really good one because it leads us to understand how the world works. Oh, that one. So I've taken this idea from Kastrup's paper and he's going to talk, he uses the flying analogy. And so you're in your small aeroplane. In fact, I used to fly at one time. And you come across this. So you're flying into a storm. I don't know how many of you have been in a storm, in a light aircraft, but if you were, then you're thrown about all over the place. You don't know whether you are falling, descending, rising up, etc., etc. So the first thing one is taught to do is to, in fact, look at your instrument panel. Now, here's the instrument panel in a small aircraft. If you look, that is the artificial horizon. It's on the ground now, so it's not working, but that will tell you whether the plane is level or not. This will tell you, very important, it's a turn bank indicator. It will tell you if you're going left or right. This is the compass, which gives you your heading. And this is your altimeter. So it tells you how high you are, but this one's very important because it tells you whether you're rising or falling. So you get some idea just by looking at this instrument alone, what's happening to you. Now this is very important because you can't uh, look out there and get the information. You have to do this. Now he uses this, Kastrup uses this as a model. And he points out quite correctly that when we look at things, we in fact are looking at the dashboard of perception. So what is the dashboard of perception? The dashboard of perception is in fact uh, what our fingers tell us, and that's very limited. I mean, try putting your hand into boiling water, you don't get much more than just a blast and a burnt hand. Or the eyes, when they look out, they see a very limited range of frequencies. Hearing, same. So we've got a very, very, very small window on the world. But when we look out, we then, the world comes into being. So then, are we in fact in a situation that they were before, that uh, unless we uh, look out and see the world, it doesn't exist? And you remember, uh, this was the time of Schopenhauer and others, 
uh, they pointed out that the world did exist, although maybe not for us. So, the brain makes consciousness according to reductionist physicalism. It's a particular structure and dynamics of matter inside our skulls. In other words, our brain generates consciousness. That somehow is or generates consciousness. Reductionists then construct these correlations as instances of causation. Specific patterns of brain activity are thought to be or generate inner experience. And this is now seen to be as quite wrong. You see, we never perceive the real world. We never actually see the storm going on out there. All we see is the dashboard, the dashboard of perception. Um, and uh, that means that uh, we think that the dashboard is real unless we know better and that's called perceptual realism. So perceptual realism is our internal perceptual states would have to mirror the external states of the world which of course they can't, they're far too many. Indeed such merit, mirroring is the definition of perceptual realism. However, since there is no a priori upper bound to this version of world states, this is not possible. All that's saying, in fact, is that there are hundreds and thousands, millions of states of perception which we know nothing about. And therefore, perceptual realism doesn't work. And then finally, um, it, it's very easy to look at brain activity and what you see then is that um, if you look at a su the subject brain activity when he's dreaming you can tell that or when he's looking at a statue or is bored you can tell that and that means there's a correlation between these states but correlation is never causation the first time I heard of a really good model after the uh, Second World War, it was a very wet year and there were hundreds and thousands of stalks about. Also, at that time, because it was the end of the war, a lot of people were settling down and having families, so there was a lot of babies. So the uh, correlation with the number of babies and the number of stalks was very high but do any of us really believe that stalks bring babies I don't think so so correlation is not causation so then we uh, have to look further than this so physicalism doesn't work so I want you to think about this and here's another reason why physicalism doesn't work because there is a broad and consistent pattern of active impairments or reductions that correlate precisely with richer, more intense experience. And I'll, I'll show you that in a moment. There you are. If you give somebody psilocybin internally, you have a very, very, very active, rich world of, of pictures, hallucinations, feeling, and so on. But brain activity decreases. So you can't any longer hold the brain activity, although it may correlate in certain circumstances with um, uh, what you're looking at. Brain activity, in fact, is not the foundation of all experience. So reductionism doesn't hold so physical reality does not exist in itself. Physical entities do not have a standalone existence. Now, what I would like you to do is just shut your eyes for a moment. What happens to your world? From your point of view, not from other people's, because they've got their eyes open. From your point of view, it goes. And in fact, what we have learned is that... Um, uh, if you don't ask a question of the world, it isn't there. 
So there isn't a standalone existence, but there are instead an image, an appearance, a representative representation of a deeper layer of reality, which in itself is non-physical by definition. So we're now arguing the consciousness underpins everything. Uh, physical properties only come into uh, existence upon being measured. It's another way of saying the needles and the dials only moved when the attached centers probed the environment. Go back to the aeroplane again. The only time you get the sensors moving is when something, when they are measuring something. Otherwise they're not. So if you don't measure anything with your body, then uh, the dashboard uh, will show uh, nothing and the world outside um, appears to disappear. Even though the real world out there continues, um, and that's because it is in fact part of consciousness. So uh, we'll go on from there, Lion. Uh, do you want to come sit here? So there we have it. Uh, the physical world is in response to our senses. It's underpinned by consciousness. So the idea that it's all made in the brain is quite clearly wrong. Now I want to tell you about another experiment that I did. And this was um, an experiment of following the work of Jacobo Grinberg. You can look that up on, on the net, Jacobo Grinberg. And I was at a conference where he was there, this is before he disappeared, and uh, he told us about the work which he had been doing. And the work which he had been doing indicates that there are fields which are generated by the brain. And these fields are very wide indeed. In fact, he calls it the synergic theory. And the um, CIA, apparently, if you believe what you read on the net, I in fact banned his work. And I can see why, because it it's, would be extremely useful if it worked clearly all the time, because you could get information about people and places uh, just by thinking. So what Jacoba Grinberg showed was that if two people are in touch with each other, in touch, I'm going to use the word emotionally in touch, then they have a link between them. Now, if you separate them and put EEG electrodes on one of them, so you're measuring brain waves on one of them, the other one is in a distant place. Uh, let's say a lab down the street, something like that. And you put flashes into the eyes of the person down the street. Then, because they are in this field contact with the other person, you can pick up the uh, effects of these flashes in the EEG of the other person. Now, in fact, I have done that experiment and it works very well. But like all parapsychological experiments, it depends on who else is there. And uh, if you have people in the lab who disbelieve, they have a negative field, and so these things don't manifest. But if you don't, and it, everybody is positive, then you get very clear transmission of the light flashes across this field, which is a field of consciousness into the other person's brain. So, um, is it all just physical matter? No, it's not. What is the basis of consciousness? It seems to be a consciousness field of some sort. And this goes in with uh, the whole question of the entanglement of neurons. And it is um, uh, a, a important uh, uh, linking in between two particles, however distant they are. So, there we are. Um, 
that's enough for the moment. So if anybody says to you uh, that uh, physical reality is the only thing, no, it's not. Physical reality is given to us by the dashboard of perception, and the dashboard of perception gives us a very limited view of the real world. So, see you later. Thanks very much for listening. Bye.